Hello, uh, welcome to uh, our first uh, lecture on uh, structural analysis. If you remember in uh, static two, we talked about reaction supports, and we're gonna continue from there. In this lecture, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna calculate reaction support, and then we're gonna get into uh, trace analysis. Take a look at the uh, problem on a board here, and we, uh, I'd like to calculate the uh, <coughs> reaction support on uh, this, uh, this simply supported beam. So one of the first thing you do is uh, draw the free body diagram. And uh, once you have that, everything has become easy. In this case, we have a uh, um, uniform load. You can convert them to concentrated load. And we can draw the um, free body diagram as we see on here. So let's solve this. The best way is to do, let's take a moment about point A and we can calculate the reaction force. So if we say summation moment going counterclockwise is positive about A is equal to zero. Now, um, starting from uh, far end, we have, uh, let's start with just the reaction. We have BY, which is gonna be positive in this case. So we're gonna have BY multiplied by, that's going to be 18. And then I'm going to have um, the other two reaction to uh, force is going to be negative, so it's going to be minus 1 half time 3 times 18, and that's time 9, then minus 1 half um, 3 times 9, and that's about uh, 99 is 18, 18 and uh, 6 is 24. So equals zero. So BY comes out to uh, 31.5 kips. So when we look at the structure like this, we talked about in class, there's three equations of equilibrium we can use to solve the problem. Summation moment, summation f of y, summation f of x. So we did the summation moment and we calculated by. The rest of the way we can go ahead and do summation f of y and summation f of x. So let's do summation f of y is equal to zero. Going up is positive. And we have uh, 31.5 and plus by. No, AY, that's good. And then minus the other two, to the other uh, force, concentrated force, which is minus one half. Three times nine, time, no, plus, minus, one half, three times nine, 18. One half, three 18, one half, three nine, equals zero. Do I have that right? 31 is correct, uh, BA1 is correct, then we have 1 half 3 times 9 and 1 half 3 times 18. Okay, so that comes out to AY. Now AY comes out to 9. The third one is the summation of x is equal to 0. Let's assume going this way is positive. And there's nothing there. So we're going to say, OK, AX is equal to 0. OK, this is done. Next, next to the problem on the board. And we like to know uh, what's the load. <clears throat> it's going to be on uh, beam uh, BE. And eventually, what's the load going to be on uh, beam uh, uh, DF? So what we have here is a concrete. Uh, uh, slab over those two beams, and say the concrete is weighs about 150 pounds per cubic feet, and they're going to give us a large amount of life load of uh, 400 pounds per square foot. And we're going to go ahead and uh, figure these things out. You have the problem right there, you look at it. The first thing you want to do is draw the free, free body diagram. So look from the top and make this uh, sketch right here so we show it. And there's our beam HF, and there's our beam uh, ED, EB and also the girder going the other way, uh, uh, CA. And we want to know what is the load that is carried by BE. 
we assume this is a one-way slap. What I mean by that, it means it's supported on both sides, so we don't have to, um, uh, we, when we do a turbulent load, we can just do a halfway each way. So halfway between the each beam. What I haven't showed is the outside beam on this side. So the B, the way that this beam, EB, carries is halfway between here, between beam of EB, and uh, what was the other one? Um, uh, AF. AF on this side. And uh, also uh, CH on this side. So it's halfway. And that's why we're going to say this beam carried the load, this amount of load in turbulent area. And that's going to be, because the whole thing was uh, six feet from here to here, halfway will be three feet. And that's the three feet on both sides. So our rectangular box is going to be basically, basically, it's going to have a width of six feet or three on each side of the beam. Now we have that. We can go ahead and calculate the weight on this beam. We can calculate this uniform load. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. And <clears throat> we said uh, the concrete is 150 pounds per cubic feet. So I have... Um, uh, so we're going to go ahead and calculate the dead load. Uh, the dead load for the slab it's going to become, uh, it's 150 pound per cubic feet, pound per cubic feet, and it's four inch thick, okay, so make that to a foot, and then it's six feet wide. This whole thing is a six feet wide down here, so I've got six feet wide, let's do it, make this to a kips, and anyway, whatever comes out to, uh, 0.3 kips per foot, that's what I have, 0.3 kips per foot, and that's my dead load. And the life load was given as 400 pound per square foot. So we're going to say the life load is 400 pound per square foot or 0.4 kips per square foot. And it's going to be time six feet. So we're going to be time six feet. And did I calculate that? Yeah, 2.4 kips per foot. And if I add that two up, it's going to be 2.7 kip per foot. Great. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say, you know what? This is going to become 2.7 kips per foot. And that's where it came from. All right. So now we know the distributor load here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to find these reaction forces. You know, this is a simply supported beam and it's pretty uniform. I don't, don't have to go ahead and do summation at a moment about one point in calculate. You can just say, okay, this is going to be down the center and each is corner is going to carry half load. And that's one way to calculate it. So it's going to be 2.7 times, uh, so BY, for example, is going to become 2.7 multiplied by 18 feet and divide that by 2 comes out to Okay, I got, I didn't do it. Come on, calculate, work with me. Okay, two. Twenty-four point three. Check my number. Twenty point three point kip. That doesn't look right. Of course it's right. I never, I'm never wrong. Okay, 2.4 kips. So now that's BY and EY comes out the same thing. Also equal EY. Again, the reason I say that because this is a perfect, you, you can look at the uh, back of the book also show stuff like that. So both reaction forces uh, half of the uh, uh, concentrated load here. So now we have that and we know, okay, this load right here is going to be 2.4, 24, 24.3 kips. Okay, that's it.